Hello, we're here today with Aziz Memon. He's a marketing effectiveness expert. Uh, we've been connected for a long time, but I haven't had a chance to ask him what that really means. So Aziz, tell us what that means. Okay. So my company, Salt Strategy, helps marketers prove and improve their marketing effectiveness. Proof is proving your effectiveness is a challenge. Like chief marketing officers are constantly grappling with data issues as to, you know, is my marketing working? Yes, maybe you can see the numbers are up, the trend is up and your marketing is working, but then the question is, is it the marketing that is really driving the sales? Or is it something's happened in the in the marketplace? Maybe demand has increased, maybe things have changed, maybe your supplier is out of business, or sorry, maybe your competitors are out of business, or maybe the pricing is too high, uh, maybe the economy is suddenly doing well. There are very many issues uh, leading to that, but the question is, is your marketing really working? So, oh, so that's not, one thing. Not, not just your, that, but which part, part of not just Which part of your marketing? Working, which part is working? That is the second thing, which part of your marketing is working. So, you know, chief executive officers and chief financial officers are constantly asking the chief marketing officer or the head of marketing, prove to me that marketing is working. Uh, can I can I cut some money out of this and can we put it into another operation? Because marketing is also one of those things that also gets cut, cut first because it's also seen as discretionary in some cases, right? <laughs> Uh, so there's that challenge. We want to be able to prove and improve uh, the effectiveness of marketing. Now, we are constantly fighting for, you know, half a share point here, improving a conversion rate by 0.2% uh, on a scale. That means a lot of money, right? So when we go in there, we look at, um, we, we look at the entire marketing effort of the company, right from the macro environment down, down to down to results because and and during the, in that time you want to be able to see what has changed in the in, in the macro environment what has changed uh, and how is that impacting the micro environment and how is that impacting you know uh, your business objectives and and so on and so forth so basically we would be we would be looking at the macro environment and using that as a benchmark to to align everything else to that and, and given the situation today that we are in, almost every two years the environment constantly change, changes. It's dynamic. You yeah. may have you may have a comp you you may not have a competitor today, but tomorrow all of a sudden you have a competitor. Yeah. Uh, you well, may you may be disrupted. You may not see where that disruption is coming from. So all of that that is changing in the environment. What we do is we look at your marketing strategy and see that everything is aligned. Are your business objectives aligned to you know the environment? Uh, and are your, is your marketing strategy aligned to the environment? Are you talking to the right audience? Uh, should, is there a more profitable segment that you should be talking to? Is your pricing right? Uh, you know, are you doing the right kind of promotions? Are you using the right medium? Is your messaging correct, right? So all of the tweaks in all of these little areas can actually add up to significant differences. Well, 15 years ago, I was vice president of an outdoor company and we were struggling to prove the ROI of outdoor. You know, mm -hmm. How do we justify the cost? And a lot of times we did A/B tests and things, and so we could, you know, we could find a way. But now with right. the proliferation of, of media, with all the various social media and stuff, I mean, three years ago we were worried about SEO. Now with Google AdWords, <laughs> SEO is almost meaningless. You know, we shouldn't be spending money on that. We should be spending money on something else. How do you keep right. up with all these changes? Well, you know, Google, Google changes algorithm, uh, you know, on you all the time. So suddenly you are ranking quite well for a certain, you know, topic or a keyword and now you're not. Yeah. So, but that's just part of it. That is just part of it. Because when we talk about, when we talk about um, uh, SEO, or I mean, when you're talking about, you know, paper click, uh, search advertising, you're actually talking about the lower funnel, at the bottom of the funnel. You're not talking... You're not talking about the top, uh, you know, top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel. That's bottom of the funnel, and that is really, that is purely short-term thinking. If you just did that, yes, you know, uh, you know, mostly marketers don't just do that. But if you just did that, then it's basically, oh, if someone's looking for for this service, yeah, I want to be found. So that's one way of looking at it. But you don't have, but SEO is important. I think it is uh, when it is still important today, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, because. 
you know, no, not everybody has deep pockets, and especially your clients who are small businesses yep. uh, and medium-sized businesses, they would have to rely on that SEO juice to be, be able to found without have, organically be found without having, you know, used um, used up pay-per-click uh, dollars. Yes. So, so SEO is actually even is still relevant, but and it's an ongoing thing. It's not something that you can avoid because. Um, and, and the only way you can achieve that really is giving and being generous with your ideas, with original ideas. So as, as they say in social media, uh, and, 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 and in, in, in when you want to try and build your audience, is just give generously, give from your heart, and then ask. Yeah. You might not even have to ask. So, yeah. so, so there is that. Who are your ideal clients? So uh, my ideal client uh, is for, for me to be, to be able to make a measurable difference, for this business to make a measurable difference, the client would have to have, uh, I'm not even talking about the size of business or size of revenues, but their marketing spend. Yes. Like if they have a marketing investment, and if that investment is in uh, you know, upwards of a million dollars, then it makes sense for them it always makes sense for them to go back and you know do do a post mortem on everything that they've done in the past yeah. to see what has worked, what hasn't worked, what we can learn from. But my the clients that I'm looking for uh, that I uh, th that would really benefit from this clients with upwards of a million dollars of revenue, and then one oh, sorry upwards of a million dollars in 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 in, um, in in marketing expense. Yeah. Uh, right. So if there's that kind of money, then what happens is the or fees are almost covered by the savings or, or the growth that we can bring to you. So it's almost, you know, uh, it almost pays for itself. And then it continues to pay over the long term because that's what we do by helping you increasing. So you can actually, it's, it's very outcome oriented. Excellent. Um, so a lot has changed. I mean, we've moved to 50% mobile now. Uh, we've moved to 70% people working from home now. Um, right. What's your advice for people going through this fairly dramatic change in environment, especially in the advertising world? Well, I think the advertising world is just today at this point in time is crumbling. Okay. Uh, it was always under pressure. The uh, you know the traditional agencies were always under pressure. Media agencies were already always under pressure. Media companies were under pressure. Because guess what? You and I are generating content now. You don't have to be an MSNBC or, you know, or, or a Bell Media to generate content, right? Uh, uh, their programming is competing with us on YouTube and so on and so forth. So, so there was always pressure. And, and, and I have been reading, um, there have been a lot of layoffs in the industry. One of the first things that my clients have done as uh, soon as this pandemic happened was, hey, let's cut out our media expenditure. Uh, people aren't listening to radio as much because they're not in the car. Uh, although radio, radio has only dipped about 4% or so listenership-wise. Okay. Uh, people aren't, people are watching a lot more television. Let's move our money to there. People are not out on the street, so they're not seeing outdoor. Let's yep. cancel that. So all of those cancellations meant, uh, you know, media companies make their revenue on, on, on arbitrage, right? And commissions. If you're not, your clients aren't spending, there's no commission to be had. Therefore, you're out. Yeah. A lot of clients are also trying to take some of the services in house. So anyway, my advice to every, I think it's about reinvention. It is. It is about reinvention um, and, and and innovation because now everything is going to be. The world is never going to be the same. Uh, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not a guru, but everything that I read, uh, our habits have actually changed in these two months. We've been doing things differently from from before. We are not the same kind of customer that we were before. Today we are, and as we as you, I think the term to use is at home customer. Yeah. The kind of things that we are buying. I'm buying loungewear more than I'm buying ties and fancier shirts and jackets. Right? Uh, those are sorts of things that are changing. Uh, those are sorts of things that I need. I might not be buying as fancy clothes and jackets and you know uh, uh, fancy suits. Uh, I don't think we need that anymore. I'm not saying that we don't need that anymore, but my, you know, eating out expenses, food, lunch, all of that, so much has changed. Uh, companies have discovered that they will be able to 
they, they just learned that, you know, guess what? Uh, people can work from home and, uh, and and maybe we lose 10 or 5 or 7% in terms of efficiency. And over a period of time, when everybody's learned how to work from home, we may even recover. We may get back to the same productivity, level, productivity levels, if not more. So so there is, there is that. So I think this is going to become a bit of a new, new norm. One of the first things that I did also, my shopping habits also changed. I said, oh, I've got, I've got some, I've got a fancy setup in my house, but I need a, a fancier, I need a fancier, you know, uh, uh, headpiece, and I need a fancier uh, this thing. I, I need my my, oh, I, I need whiteboards around. I need, uh, uh, I, I need my my rooms to be soundproof or or over this less echo things like that. So all of that is changing, and my fear is we won't be going back to the same jobs that we had before. Uh, uh, you know, it's fearful in the beginning. Change is always scary, but it's going to get it's going to get easier. I'm I'm, I'm more optimistic. I think this is just hastened uh, innovation. It has just pushed everybody to innovate. Even my grandmother. I don't have a grandmother. My grandmother can do Zoom now. Yeah, she's had to. Yep, I know exactly what you mean. How are right. So there is home? invent, reinvent, reinvent, reinvent. That's what you want to do. Yeah. And this is the time that wealth is going to change hands. You know, this is the time where 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 um, there is opportunity in the marketplace to do something dis- different to disrupt. Yeah. This is the time. Unlike any other time. How would our audience get a hold of you? How, so I beg your pardon? How would our audience get a hold of you? How do we contact you? Oh. Uh, you can find me on my website. My company name is called saltstrategy.com. Okay. Salt, salt as in, yep. you know, salt that you have on food, uh, saltstrategy.com. Uh, okay. Basically, yeah. we are a one-trick pony. You know, okay. one of the things that I wanted was simplify my life. I'm only doing one thing, and I do it well. And I'm in the expert at it. Marketing audits that result in a good marketing strategy for a client. Uh, a very effective plan that starts to show Difference. Okay. And your no, email? Not... Your email? Uh, it's Aziz, A-Z-I-Z, at saltstrategy.com. Okay. And you're on LinkedIn, of course. I'm on LinkedIn. You can okay. find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Um, and I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. Yeah. I avoid Twitter because I don't want to say the wrong thing and then regret it. <laughs> right. And yeah, and besides, you're not the president, so it doesn't really... Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. You're president of a company, not a country. Yeah, he doesn't. He, do, he doesn't pay attention to me anymore. Uh, yeah, I know. But nor am I paying attention. To, nor are we paying attention to him anymore. It's just that you know, he's in your face. Uh, Aziz, somehow the topic always goes to trouble. Aziz, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and your insight. And have a really safe day. You too. You too. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you. Okay.